Hi everyone! How are you doing this morning? I hope you're doing pretty good. We're going to continue topic 2 classification today. And if you have your Cornell notes ready, this is your learning objective, which is 2.1.1. Describe a species as a group of organisms that can reproduce to produce a fertile offspring. So what are species? This right here, you call it a lion, and its scientific name is Panthera leo, and they are one species of animals. So what are species when we say lions are species? So let's try to read the statements in the table. Some of them are right and some of them are wrong. I want you to think about your decision for each of these statements. Number one. The members of a species have many characteristics in common. What do you think about this? I'll give you guys a few seconds. Do you think this is, you're sure this is right? You think this is right? You think this is wrong? Or you're very sure that this is wrong? Second, we have all members of a species live together in the same place. So try to think about it. Do you think this is right? Are you sure this is right? Do you think this is right? Do you think it's wrong? Or you're super sure that this is wrong? The third statement, members of the same species can breed to make fertile offspring. And again, do you think this is right? Sorry, do you think this is right? Are you sure this is right? Do you think this is wrong or you're very sure that this is wrong? The fourth statement, members of different species cannot breed to make fertile offspring. Are you sure this is right? Do you think this is right? Do you think this statement is wrong or are you sure this statement is wrong? And lastly, the characteristics of a species stay the same forever. Do you think this is right? Oh, sorry, I keep on saying think. Are you sure this is right? Do you think this is right? Do you think this is wrong? Or are you sure this statement right here is wrong? So let's have a look. If you chose, I'm sure this is right for the first statement, you're correct. Members of species have many characteristics in common. For statement number two, all of the members of a species live together in the same place. If you chose this is wrong, then you're correct. We are human beings, right? And we don't live in the same place. There are human beings all over the world. And it's the same with lions. There are lions in different parts of the world as well. Members of the same species can breed to make fertile offspring. This is definitely correct. That means that when the members, so if you, if you are a member of the same species, you can breed and fertile offspring just means that they can make a baby that is alive and healthy. Statement number four, members of different species cannot breed to make fertile offspring. So if we chose yes for number three, and therefore the answer is, I'm sure this is right. Because different species should not be able to breed to make fertile offspring. And lastly, the characteristics of a species stay the same forever. What do you think? If you chose this is wrong, then you are correct. The characteristics of species doesn't always stay the same forever. There are species that would evolve into having some characteristics that are much more different than what they used to have. So what are species? A species is a set of morphologically and genetically similar organisms. Morphology just means how they look and genetically is to do with their DNA. The individuals within the population of a species can reproduce to make a fertile offspring. That means that individuals 
That means that each and every one of the organisms that belong to the same species can breed to make a living, healthy offspring. A species has a separate line of descent from a common ancestor and its own evolutionary trajectory, or put more simply, the characteristics of the organisms in a species change or evolve over many generations separately to those of other species. So this statement right here it is pretty big, but what it just means is that the species does not stay the same forever. Just like the last statement in our previous, previous slide. So how do you define species? So a type of organism that is a basic unit of cl classification. Uh, so species is part of the unit of classification. If you guys remember that you had to make mnemonics, that is the classification that we're talking about. And individuals of the different species are not able to interbreed successfully. So how do we define it fully? So a species, this is what you have to memorize, a species is a group of organisms that can reproduce to produce a fertile offspring, and that's it. So a group of organisms, so individuals of organisms, and they're a group that can reproduce to produce a fertile offspring. So these are just mainly pictures, and if you were in class, um, I would ask you to do this activity called See, Think, and Wonder, but I'm sure you can do that right now as well. I want you to have a look at these photos. What can you see? Just write it down, and what do you think about those photos? And are there any questions that you have about these photos? I wish I can listen to your statements and questions straight away. Unfortunately, I can't. Um, but it would be lovely for you guys to give me an idea of what you can see, think, and wonder. Just send me a message if you feel like it. Alright, so these are all actually animals that I've shown you are popularly recognized endangered species. And they are on the IUCN Red List of 2012, which is such a long time ago. How long was that, honestly? like 10 years ago. Yeah, it was 10 years ago. The African lion, there are about 32,000 left in the wild. And let's see, it goes down here. Giant panda, 1,600 left in the wild. But this is in 2012, so we're not sure about that. Now, if you are curious about these species and whether or not they are still endangered, I would recommend you to have a Google and research on this and let me know. All right, now that we have defined species, which is a group of organisms that can breed um, to produce a fertile offspring, we're going to cover the next learning objective, which is 2.1.3, which is to describe the binomial system of naming species as an internationally agreed system in which the scientific name of an organism is made up of two parts, showing the genus and species. So what we mean by this learning ob objective is that they want to ask you, how do you give organisms a scientific name? Binomial nomenclature is the biological system of naming organisms in which the name is composed of two terms, where the first term indicates the genus and the second term indicates the species of the organism. So for example, Homo sapiens. So genus is Homo and sapiens is the species. Homo is a Latin word for human or man and sapiens is derived from a Latin word that means wise or astute. Is it astute? Is that how you pronounce it? Let me know. So this is your genus and that is your species name and that's our, our biological scientific name. So let's look at the binomial system 
This right here is a meerkat, and the scientific name is Suricata suricata. So meerkat is the common name, just like for us, it's humans and human beings, but we are homo sapiens, the scientific name for us. Okay, what about this one right here? Do you know the name of the species of this man? Okay. Clearly, he is human, and he is not a titan, so the scientific name for Levi should be Homo sapiens. He belongs to the, the group Homo sapiens. And this right here is called the Baobab tree, and the scientific name is Adansania digitata. I hope my pronunciation is correct. I'm actually not so sure. Okay. Here we have a parasite, and it's a malarial parasite, and the scientific name is Plasmodium falciparum. And do you guys know what this is? This is oyster mushroom, but its scientific name is Plutor Plurotis ostratus. I don't know if I said that right. Anyways. Those are the binomial system that is used by biologists all over the world as an international language for naming organisms. So these are just examples of common names and scientific names. So the key points so far that we have learned is that binomial system uses two names for each species. So they use the genus name and then the trivial name. So a species also is a group of individuals or organisms that may live in the same habitat, but mainly they breed together to produce a fertile offspring. Classification is very important to study evolution, and especially the sequence of bases in DNA can be used to be a more accurate means of classifying organisms. Okay. Now we're going to move on to learning objective 2.2.1, which is state the main features used to place all organisms into one of the five kingdoms, animal, plant, fungus, prokaryotes, and proto protoctista. So today we're just going to focus on the animal kingdom and especially the first, first groups. Okay, so firstly, what is an animal? Animals are clearly living things. Like plants and animals, they need food and water to live. Scientists divide animals into two main groups. Animals that have a backbone are called vertebrates, and animals that don't have backbones are called invertebrates. So if you have a look over here, we have our simple classification. Okay, what I want you to do for five minutes is to try to complete this table of features for each type of vertebrate. So what you can do right now is grab a piece of paper and I want you to make this table. You don't need to draw these the pictures right here, but I do want you to draw this table. So the heading, it would be classifying vertebrates. And then you have mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fish. And then you have over here in this column, body covering, how it breathes, where it lives, and how offsprings are produced. And then you have some clues here, but except for the fish, somehow it's all gone. You have to figure that out yourself. So once you're done copying this down, I want you to try to write down the answers. And pause this video until you are ready. Alright, so if you are ready, let's look at mammals first. The body covering for mammals, they do have hairy or furry skin. How does it breathe? Mammals breathe through lungs. Where does it live? Mostly on land. Mostly means that some mammals live in water. And how offsprings are produced? Most young are born alive. For birds, the body covering, they have mainly feathers. They breathe through lungs and they mostly live on land and what we mean by on land is that you know there are trees and land as well offspring are produced by laying eggs reptiles have tough skin with scales and they breathe through their lungs live mostly on land and they also lay eggs amphibians have soft moist skin but they do not have scales they breathe through their lungs and they live 
on land and in water, and they also lay eggs in water. Fish have scales. They have gills instead of lungs, so they're the only ones that don't breathe through lungs, and they live in water. Offspring are produced by laying eggs, so I hope that you guys got all that right, and if you don't, please write down your corrections. Now what I want you to do is to take a picture of your answer and upload it on Google, Google Classroom, please, and thank you. Okay, so now that you know some of those very simple features of vertebrates. I want you to make a guess of which group does this animal right here called the duck-billed platypus belong to. So what are the features of a platypus? They mainly live in water. They feed on, they feed their young on milk. They are covered in brown fur. Body temperature is around 30 degrees Celsius. Have a beak that they use to search for food on the river bottom. The males of the species have a venomous spike on their hind legs. Oops, oh my god, I told you the answer already. Actually, it's a mammal. <laughs> so actually, one of the tasks I want you to do as well is to write down the number of features in the passage that makes a duck-billed platypus a mammal. So if you guys can also write that down in your worksheet, I would be very, very grateful. The answer would be number two, three, and four. And actually, if you have a look here, if you can, you can actually realize that some of these features belong to the other groups as well. Like living in water could be a fish, it could be an amphibian, and having a beak could be a bird. And having venomous spike. Instead of venomous spike, when you think about venom, you think about snakes and they are reptiles. However, most of the features right here, feeding young on milk, brown fur, and also a body temperature around 30 degrees Celsius, this refers to being warm-blooded. There are three out of like six that makes this duck-billed platypus a mammal. Alright, next up, loggerhead turtle. Which group does this turtle belong to? Mostly live in water, breathe through lungs, skin is covered in pale brown dry scales, lay tough leathery eggs on land, cold-blooded, feed on invertebrates like crabs and clams, can live for over 39 years, <laughs> The answer came out straight away. <laughs> reptile. Okay, the loggerhead turtle is a reptile. And what I want you to do is also to write down the numbers of the features in the passage that makes this loggerhead turtle a reptile. I'm just going to pause here so you can pause. And then I'll show you the answer. It should be these ones. So from number one to four. All right. So we have a simple lesson today. Uh, well, mainly we talked about the definition of a species. So species is a group of organisms that can breed to produce a fertile offspring. And then we learned about the binomial system, naming system, which uses the genus and the species name. And then lastly, we talked about the features of animals especially the vertebrates. So the next time I see you guys, we're going to go into the other groups of organisms instead. So don't forget to send me your notes that you have for today and that table and also the descriptions of the loggerhead turtle and the potipus. So I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching this video and stay healthy and strong, everyone. Bye.